Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me. And this is the continuation of my lexicon series. So I really want to thank you for coming back and uh, following me uh, as I progress through finishing eight paintings that started out as these really ugly slop words. Uh, and so I always find it really fascinating to know that it doesn't really matter how you begin. It takes the pressure off just beginning, just putting some paint down. Now, the only thing that I did think about before starting the series was my palette. I chose colors that were inspired by our granddaughter, and I've stayed with these colors for all eight paintings. And what that did for me was gave me tons of freedom. And then the second thing I did to make sure that this series would be cohesive a lot of you want to be cohesive, you know, like I want a personal voice that everybody can recognize. Uh, the secret behind that is to make give yourself some limitations, some parameters. So you're going to see that not only am I using all 12 by 12 inch panels, not only am I using all the same palette, but I'm choosing to feature uh, letters and numbers as my shapes because uh, number one, I love uh, typography. And so in this Part three, I'll be working on two different paintings. I numbered all back sides of these slot boards so that as they progressed and I took photos um, in my folder on my computer, I'd be able to say, okay, this is number one, this is number two. And if you don't label the back side, they're going to change so much over time. You're not even going to know, you're not going to remember which one was which. So I really encourage you, if you're working in a series, label the back side with the number so that number one and all those photos you take, label your photos. This is number one. This is number two. Okay, so I hope you enjoy part three. And again, I want thick paint. I want opacity. I'm not worried about transparency at the moment. And when I say worry, that's not the right word. I'm not thinking about necessarily transparency at the moment because that for me oftentimes can be a clarifying thing. Or it can be that as I'm selecting the colors in the beginning, um, I will choose some that are opaque and some that are transparent, but I didn't really give that much thought because Willa didn't give that much thought and I'm choosing her palette. The cadmium, let's see, this kind of, this probably has cadmium in it. This, this is uh, yellow orange is gonna be opaque, aqua is opaque. Burn a green light is probably semi-transparent. Black and white are opaque. The purple is opaque. The cadmium red deep is opaque. So I have a lot of opaque colors in here. Which means that um, I definitely like the contrast between opacity and transparency. But when I sand, that's a form of transparency. So maybe that's why I'm not too concerned about the colors that I began with. Um, the feeling of transparency can come later with both sanding and glazing. Just take your time. Enjoy. I'm enjoying this process. So now I get to do this one and uh, think about that. Now this one, um, because I have so much opacity now, maybe I will do kind of a thinner thing. And I think I will I'll take this color just after I was talking about um, not thinking about transparency and opacity. Um, I can actually take my slot board here and that's where I get most of my extra paint off. So this is how you would want to clean your brush here. Get most of your paint out of the brush on a slot board, going back and forth and back and forth. And then after you feel you've gotten most of that paint out, go onto your paper towel and get as much as you can. And then go into your water. And then, see, there's not much in that brush anymore. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to go kind of transparent with this color. Uh, could be semi-transparent, I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to add some airbrush medium. I don't think the color will be pure, though. I'll add something to it, like I'm going to add some that has black in it. So I'm going to add a little bit of this turquoise to this. Again, turquoise plus orange is definitely not bright orange. It's knocked it back. It's a little saturated and I like that color. It's kind of a golden color. Adding that airbrush medium and see where we're at here. 
make sure I've got this is the um, the other side of that shape. So that's cool. It's, like I said, it's a glaze. So. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to uh, bring each panel, all eight panels, uh, move them forward, kind of like what I'm doing with this first one, because um, it's speaking to me. I'm enjoying the process. I like the shapes. I like how they're interacting. I like how the colors are working together. I mean, it's Willow's palette, but it's my own way of using these colors, which feels very different from how she used her colors. So you never have to worry about, if you copy an artist, you don't ever have to worry about, you know, it's not gonna look that much like what they did because you are not them. Lovely going over the turquoise with this yellow. I'm just making observations as I do this, you know, and that's really fun. So here I can um, play with how transparent I want this yellow. And I could even um, let's see here, take I've got an index card here. I'll just set it here. And then as I try to smooth this out a bit, a little streaky, but I know I'm gonna sand it, so it doesn't really matter. But okay, so there's a, like a more transparent area. And uh, now I've got my brush full of paint and maybe I'll just lay it here for a second. Yeah, so I'm kind of liking that. And uh, I like I like the stuff that's behind it too. Like that's kind of cool. I can tighten it up a little bit, but I want some of that original craziness to be there just like I do in each one of these paintings. So, all right, so I'm gonna probably let this one um, take a photo of it. Let's see, what's my next one? This is the one, another slot board, I think. Well, number three, no, well, yeah. I think this one, well, it, it wasn't originally a slap board, but it certainly looks pretty sloppy to me. All right, so this one needs some very major help, I think, and this is where I might go for a much bigger shape. Let's see what we've got here. This is a enormous shape relative to the scale of this painting. Um, this would definitely give me a lot of quiet. really just fun to play with. What I'm looking at here then is like what's around it. And when I look around this shape, I see, you know, there's this quiet, there's a big thing of quiet, you know, there's some transparency here. Um, if I move it over then, if I, I've got this little line at the bottom, so I could line it up with that. And then I've got this bit of rectilinear going on there. So, um, this this is the shape that was in the other one again, and but it was a B. So now if I did something like this, that, that could be interesting. Maybe I'll just do that, keep it simple. Um, and then again, these um, these unifiers, these uh, things that were are going to hold your painting, make them seem more cohesive. Um, again, it's just a choice and. When you come upon something you really like, that's what you want to um, kind of recur in your work, right? So this is already a solid shape. If I put this on top, I might be breaking that up. So um, I don't want—I don't want to make it too busy. But what I want to do is um, kind of. But I've got this down here and, and that. So maybe I will put this up here. Why not? And I might do this in black. Again, I'm I'm still playing, and you know I am thinking a little bit, but that doesn't mean I'm not necessarily playing. I'm just not playing with my usual mark making. That's crazy. I'm I'm kind of playing with shape. Now I'm playing with shape. Okay, so and I'm I'm not thinking too hard. I mean I'm just sort of like reacting. Like if I put it here, do I like it? And if I do, I'm going to do it. 
So that's kind of advanced play, if you want to call it that. Now, this is a very large shape. And um, I don't necessarily have to have it be this large. The other thing I could do is um, have an idea for this shape. What I want to do is I want to trace it first. Do something different here. So if I move this down, um, it's pretty good. I'm going to trace here. Kind of doing a variation. this I'm doing this and then try to see my lines it's pretty good I guess because it doesn't have to be exact there so there's that and then got this guy which we built Bring it way off to the bottom. So I'm not only adding letters, but I'm also adding a lot of geometry to this because letters, what I love about letters is that they're both curvilinear and rectilinear, and people can relate to them. I can relate to them, and they feel both elementary as well as you know kind of sophisticated just depends on how you look at it so now there we go and I know you can't really see those lines very well you can see the pencil lines you kind of show um, but, but as I start to paint it you will you know, really see it so now um, I was going to go dark with this but now I think I want to just now that I see it I think I want to go with um, Right, this already has yellow in it, so I might as well try to use that. Um, let me come over here and just I'm gonna just go for this solid color here because I like it. Just it is all semi-transparent. So this, if I really wanted this to be solid, I'd have to put a couple different coats. 